Adam Green here with no more news. It's March 27, 2019. I want to start with this clip out of APEC of them talking about how they're going to take over student governments just like how they've taken over Congress and Washington. Here we go. How are we going to beat back the anti-Israel divestment resolution at Berkeley? We're going to make sure that pro-Israel students take over the student government reversely. Vote. Pro-Israel students take over the student governments across the United States and then vote pro-Israel. This is how APAC operates in our nation's capital. This is how This is how APEC operates in our nation's capital. They have their APEC minions take over politicians, take over the government. APEC must operate on our nation's campuses. See, do the same on the campuses that they do in Washington. So Think about this. Last month when Representative Ilhan Omar just acknowledged that APEC existed and said it's all about the Benjamins, meaning that money buys influence in Congress, you know, common sense, everybody knows, or in, in Washington. And they lost their minds calling it vile anti-Semitism. They attacked her viciously, viciously, viciously. But uh, APEC just admitted that they going to take over the student governments and that they've taken over Washington. The double standard is incredible. And this is their plan. APEC high school training opportunities. We got leadership training programs on their website, how to take over all these student governments. Tablet APEC University, why the most important people at the policy conference might be the students. That's back in 2013. We got APEC, 127 student government association presidents say no to bad Iran deal. So that's probably 127 APEC, APEC controlled student governments, I would assume. And um, I'm going to play some clips uh, from the Al Jazeera documentary about the Israeli lobby. And one of the I'm not going to play this, but this is a video I put up. You should check it out. Link in description. Undercover footage of anti BDS astroturfing showing how this these uh, Israel groups are paying people to go disrupt BDS events. And then we will finish off with some more from the Al Jazeera documentary and then get into this. This girl, this APEC employee. Where is she? This APEC employee here and all of the crooked stuff that she's doing. Literally, Israeli spies all over the United States, all over college campuses. APAC has an established network across high schools and universities and is also part of the wider campus coalition against BDS. They're constantly bragging about their media connections. They also coordinate a lot between organizations. So like APAC, we focus on political. We have one very specific, very effective angle for combating BDS, but the ICC pools resources. Yeah, we found out what that, uh, that method was. They lobby politicians to make it illegal to boycott Israel, to anti-BDS laws. They control Congress, and that's why they pass the laws. Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz being some of the some of the worst. This is from all of the campus organizations, so that like they're tapped in on all angles. Tapped in on all angles. The Israel on Campus Coalition is a coordinating group at the front line of the battle against BDS. We built up this massive national political campaign to crush them and to fight back and to fight fire with fire. I've done a, a couple of videos I'll put in the link in the description below to more on this guy and more about like the technological aspect of all the spying that they're doing on social media and the internet. Very, very disturbing stuff that none of the fake patriot Zionist media will ever talk about. A foreign state spying all over our country and buying our politicians openly. They, they try to tell you, oh, it's a patriotic thing to not say anything about that and go along with it all. What we saw was a growing global movement to destroy Israel that was manifesting on American college campuses. It makes sense that they would try to poison the next generation. Poison, yeah. One thing every 
member of Congress and president and ambassador Human rights and newspaper for editor has Palestine. in common is by and large they spent a little bit of time on a college campus and probably those were formative years. So they want to control the children, the formative The Israel years. on Campus Coalition is at the center of the lobby's response to BDS. There are about 100, maybe 120 now professionals that are working for a dozen national ICC partner organizations like APAC and Hasbara Fellowships and Stand With Us and Hillel and Chabad. Chabad on campus, Stand With Us, APEC, all these groups, such a machine behind this anti-BDS thing. And they got, they're already past it. There's the SB1 bill that the that they're still trying to push through. And, and you know for a fact Trump will sign that in a millisecond and Israel will never be able to be criticized again. And APEC. Stand With Us and the ICC have a particularly close relationship. The Israel on Campus Coalition, they really oversee like the whole movement. They're sort of the ones that like have the bird's eye view. They just feel like next week a BDS resolution comes to campus. So the IC will be the ones, they'll organize a conference call with all the partners. So they might say, okay, stay with us, we need a little bit more of your help because we need something regarding like what's my BDS resolution. The newspaper wants us to write like an op-ed. Can you guys help like the op -ed? So they'll sort of be the ones and they'll sort of be overseeing it. At get the Israel Project's offices, on. Amanda confided further in Tony. Her boss at Stand With Us instructed her to call BDS a racist hate group as often as possible, she said, because it polls well. Polls well. They're the hateful racist. Stand ones. With Us also had what she described as a covert group which would slander people as anti-Semites. Mm. It made her feel uncomfortable. Yeah, it looks, sounds like Amanda recalled how Stand With Us was involved at her university. Students who criticized Israel's treatment of Palestinians were routinely accused of anti-Semitism. The pro-Israel side would say things like, anti-Semitic. Anti-Semitism. Is like, anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. Israel and not other Arab countries. You know, like look at all this bad stuff happening to other places. And look at that. that that's their favorite the argument too. There's there's bad stuff going on. Why are they targeting Israel and not other Arab countries? This is the double standard argument that the ADL gives, and this is uh, considered anti-Semitism. If there's anything else in the world that's going wrong, you you can't talk about Israel if there's anything else going on. It's the what about them argument. So we're only allowed to criticize what Israel does to Palestinians or the wars that they want to start if there's not one crime going on anywhere else in the world. That, that's the way they try to do it. It's a straight deflection and a cop-out and a non-argument. Imagine me standing in front of a jury uh, for they're trying to get me for murder, and I say, but there's other murders going on. You're focusing on my murder. Non-argument. You know, like, look at all this bad stuff happening to other places, and... Um, you know, and Israel is like a democracy. Like, they would just say all this stuff. A democracy that like where, so where only Jews can uh, have a vote. Do you think that there have been well intentioned yeah. activists on American campuses so who religious. have found themselves in very difficult situations because these pro Israel groups have tarnished them as anti Semites? Oh, absolutely. It's not a democracy, it's a theocracy. And then next up we have, uh, we'll finish off with this girl. This is just an apex spy all over campuses in the United States. And just so disturbing the, the stuff she says. She, she uh, organizes a walkout of some BDS vote and then they totally spin it in the media and she brags about all her media connections. She, she secretly spies on her opposition groups on Facebook and stuff. A real, real, real uh, naughty girl here. Our investigation into the role of the Israeli state at US campuses led Tony to an employee at the embassy in Washington. She's American, and her job is to analyze BDS activity for the Israeli government. So, like, nobody really knows what we're doing. Um, but mainly it's been a lot of, like, research, like, monitoring BDS things and reporting it back to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and, like, making sure everyone knows what's going on. They need a lot of research done and stuff like that. When they talk about it in Knesset, like usually I've like contributed to what the background information is. 
So this girl, a little spy on American campuses, is, is getting all her info and giving it to Knesset, the Israeli government. I'm not going to campuses. It's more about connecting organizations and, I guess, campuses, providing like resources and strategy if students need it. Is the Israeli embassy trying to leverage faculty? Or? Yeah. They um, even have the faculty. faculty like advocacy groups that kind of train faculty so we're like helping them a little bit with like funding connections bringing them to speak buying off faculty to be pro-israel having them speak to diplomats and people in the mfa that need this information the intolerance that spawned Here's the revolution is the same kind of intolerance that has spawned anti-semitic movements throughout history our undercover reporter was meeting an employee of the israeli embassy in washington she had led a pro-Israel group while at university in California. So if you are here tonight in opposition to this resolution... Students at Davis were about to vote in favor of a divestment motion. During the debate, the pro-Israel group staged a walkout. They uploaded videos to publicize their protest. Our thought was to control the narratives by having a speech that like we wanted it to cause attention. We wanted everyone to see us walking out to show that, like, this doesn't represent us or we're good about this. Um, so that's how we kind of formulated it. That day, all of us released, like, 50 op-eds and major news sources so that when people made a hashtag and, like, a whole thing trending, so when people opened their Facebooks, it wouldn't be them celebrating their victory, it would be us sharing our stories. Once it blew up, then random people, like the Huffington Post, contacted me and was like, do you have anything to say? And I was like, conveniently, I wrote an op-ed two weeks ago just in case. So convenient. People who weren't involved in anything, like, their entire news feed was Israel stuff. And, like, that was what we wanted, because that's how we got the word out there. How do you delegitimize the other side? Delegitimizing them. Um, kind of through that, that lens of taking over and like making them sound crazy at their game. Reports say when the Israel, Israel supporters tried to object to this vote, the pro-Palestinian students you just saw tried to shout them down with cries of Alu Akbar. I invite you now to stand up. Really, stand up. This is what up. really happened. And join me in walk Of course, we know that they left willingly and they stated that they were going to walk out of the room. Julia spoke about her former days as a student. And Fox News spun it and said that they kicked them out of the room when they actually walked out. Julia spoke about her former days as a student. While at UC Davis, she was also an activist with APAC. The training she received from the most powerful arm of the pro-Israel lobby left its mark. I can immediately tell a meeting with somebody where they were trying to thank me. Like the way that I talk about them, like how do you say I'm an APAC training camp? Hasbara, ZOA, she there's so many of them. Really well. She follows the commands that she has been given by these Israeli organizations, and she follows it really well. I pretty much, all my friends work at APAC, all of them, so whenever we have events at the embassy, and there's like, oh, we should invite APAC people. It's like a joke that, like, obviously I'm going to be the one to, like, write all the emails down. So, whatever, they're like, we have to submit names and, like, lists for events. Mine's, like, 15 names, and, like, 14 of them are APAC. APAC encourages the students it trains to conceal any affiliation. Secret Apex spies all over campus. You say I'm a pro-Israel student from this campus. And when you're meeting with students on campus, I would never say, like, I am the Apex campus rep. I say, my name's Julian, I'm a pro-Israel student. Like, you don't need the title, you don't need the organization. APAC's involvement in student council elections is also kept secret. APAC attracts the more political students, students who are more interested in like lobbying. We have like campaigns and stuff like that. We dealt with student elections, very behind the scenes. I have several weird Facebooks. I have my fake Facebook that I follow like all the SJP accounts. 
have like some fake name. His name is Jay Bernard or something. So it just sounds like an old white guy, which is the plan. Um, I tried to, I like joined all these groups. A lot of people haven't added me. I mean, I maybe just wanted to see on the news feed like what kind of articles they were sharing, just to kind of see like, what their internal dialogue was. Every single event that I put on, you would have these pro-Israel groups coming out before our guests even got there with their cameras videotaping. Julia has no contact with her handlers in Israel. She writes her intelligence briefs and awaits their instructions. Like it's like a special like server that's like really secure. But I don't have access to it's not an American. You have to have like cables to access the server. It's called cables. It's not even necessarily a secret. It's like military secrecy. Military spy network. I write reports that my boss translates into the cables and sends them, and then they'll send something back, and then he'll translate it and tell me what I need to do. I'm sure Mueller will be all over this uh, election meddling. This this sp foreign spies all over our country. Uh, you know, no talk about this, only Russia. None of the fake patriots care at all about all this spying going over to our greatest ally. If she believes it's spying on activists to suppress a free speech movement, then, you know, peace be to her. And um, I hope she feels good sleeping at night being on that side of things. We're a group of student activists advocating for Palestinian human rights. And to think that we, we're, we're so upsetting and threatening to a state is pretty awe-striking to me. Um, creepy, but also, I guess, makes me more proud of the work I did. You represent that government. I can't say anything negative about BB or like the government because I don't really work for them. Not directly. I'm just a normal American. She works for BB. She works for BB. No, you're not an American. You are a traitor. You are a foreign traitor to Israel, to the state of Israel. Thanks for watching, guys. I am Adam Green with No More News. Check out nomorenews.org. Like, share, subscribe. Tell everyone you know. APEC runs the government, and they run student governments, in their own words. Undercover footage. This undercover footage that nobody will talk about. And by the way, this, un this documentary is so good. Make sure to watch the whole four-hour, four-part series. They tried to suppress it and call it, it, called it anti-Semitic. Of course, no big surprise. That's all, guys. See you in the next one.